Good morning, Springs of Grace. Welcome to my wood shop. Not a lot of uh, wood shopping going on today, but it was so nice. I just had to get out of the house and, and uh, get outside a little bit. So just wanted to um, share with you Thursday's devotional. If you look into the ESV study Bible, you'll find a chart of events of the Holy Week. And on Thursday of the Holy Week, the Gospels record three significant events. The Last Supper, uh, Jesus's upper room discourse, and Jesus's prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. I know you each have experienced a Holy Week of Easter this year, unlike any other in the past, and most likely you're going to move into an Easter day unlike any other. So I want to just share a couple of encouraging words and thoughts from Jesus's upper room discourse that I hope will help you, as it did me, to remember that these times we are living in are not the end of our world, and indeed Christ has risen. Jesus was determined to finish his mission strong. He used every second of his ministry to accomplish his mission. By Thursday evening of Holy Week, he knew his hour had come. He was in the midst, in the final hours of accomplishing his mission, achieving the greatest victory of all time, literally of all time. This was the end of his earthly ministry. This was the last private recorded time that he spent with his disciples. He knew he'd been sent to earth on a holy mission, and he was now preparing to go back to be with his father. I want to encourage you to read John chapters 13 through 17, five chapters. It takes about 20 minutes. It's the only gospel that records these events. I want to encourage you as I have been encouraged this week by what I call, as a football coach, Jesus's final locker room talk that he gives to his team before they take the field and bust out of the locker room doors the field of this world, and they turn it upside down with the greatest victory of all times. We see Jesus continuing to be a servant leader by washing the disciples' feet in the upper room before launching into his locker room talk. He models for them that they should continue to care for each other and love each other as he has done for them. So he is the model servant leader. Jesus opens up by driving home the new commandment, the commandment that we are to love one another. Look at John 13, 34, where it says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. Or John 15, 12, where Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Or just a little further on in John 15, 17, where Jesus says, These things I command you so that you will love one another. He promises that although he is leaving the earthly, the earth in bodily form, he will not leave them or us as orphans. Rather, he will send a helper, the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, to not only walk with them as he did, but to actually dwell permanently in their hearts. He promises us a backup. The end of chapter 14, Jesus tells the disciples, rise, let us go from here. We're not told exactly where they go, but it could be that they have left the upper room where supper and the washing of the feet occurred. And they went back to the disciples' campsite on the Mount of Olives, where Jesus continues his pregame locker room talk. He may have grabbed a hold of a nearby vine and used it for illustrated purposes, as he often did, when he began to describe to the disciples how his new church, this new body of believers, would be like a vine dresser, like a vine, like the branches of the vine and the fruit of the vine. It was a beautiful and easy to understand strategy. God is the vine dresser that leads and steers the vine. Jesus is the vine that provides life to the branches. Non-believers are the dead branches that are gathered and burned up. Believers are the branches that are continually bearing fruit and being pruned to bear even more fruit as they abide in Christ. Christ goes on to explain that to abide in him is to keep his commandments. And then immediately he clarifies that his commandments are that we are to love one another. 
and that in, do so, in doing so, we will both be found full of joy as well as we will bring glory to God. So he has a strategy for us, the fullness of joy and the glory of God. Jesus clarifies and creates accurate expectations for his disciples and for us so that they or we would not be caught off guard. We would not be surprised or discouraged and then ultimately fall away. He makes it clear that tough times are coming. As a believer, you will be at odds with non-believers or the world. We or you will experience adversity when trying to share the good news of Jesus. This will be tough, Jesus states. Jesus brings hope to the tough times, though. Although he will soon be leaving them in his earthly body, he reminds them that, again, that he will immediately be sending a helper, the Holy Spirit of God, who will actually dwell in them and be with them 24-7, as he is with us. The Holy Spirit will not only dwell in them or in us, leading, guiding, teaching us, he will also go out into the world ahead of us and, so to speak, cultivate and prepare the hearts of those that God chooses. So he says, fear not, I will send help. Ultimately, Jesus assures the disciples and us with a strong and a loud take heart, take courage, that although we will experience tribulation and adversity while we're in this world, he, and therefore us, has overcome the world. So be courageous and do not fear. Finish strong. We win. Victory is ours. Jesus wraps up his discourse with what many consider to be the most powerful prayer from the Son to the Father, on our behalf and for God's glory. In it, Jesus states, to God and prays for us that he has ultimately secured and redeemed eternal life for God's believing creation. Amen. He has accomplished his mission on earth and he's glorified God in it. Amen. He's asked God to return him to God's presence where he began. Amen. He's created true disciples to launch this gospel message of good news by giving us God's word and his joy in a mission that has been accomplished. Amen. And he prays for continual sanctification for us as believers. He prays that believers will ultimately be with him in heaven and see his glory. Amen. As we wrap up Thursday and head out of the locker room onto the field of life, let us do so with great joy in knowing that, number one, we have the greatest coach as a servant leader to follow hard after. He promises that when we lose heart and grow weary, he sent a backup to lead, to guide, and to encourage us, and that we have a strategy that is full of joy and glory to God, and that we won't be caught off guard. We understand it will be tough, but by the end of the game, we know the final score. We know that God wins and we are victorious. Now go get them. Happy Easter and God bless you. We're getting ready. We're making the thing. Where'd you go? Oh my, look at Daniel go. He's just being very understanding. Understanding? Yeah. Like crazy? Well, I mean, you're like setting up a stand. Uh, <laughs> Don't choke on the pig, babe. <laughs>